Well, just the other night, Donald Trump packed tens of thousands of people into a stadium in Mobile, Alabama. It turned out to be the biggest campaign rally so far in this presidential race. But you wouldn't know it by looking at the headlines. Take this one in Politico. The South rises for Trump, but only 20,000 of them. The New York Times put it this way. Donald Trump fails to fill an Alabama stadium. So is the press taking Trump seriously? Do attacks by the establishment hurt him or make him stronger? Joining me now to debate it, CEO of Stirk, Scott Rasmussen, and Republican strategist Brad Blakeman. Welcome to you both. Brad, first to you. I want to put up on the screen the full Politico headline. And even by the low standards of this publication, this is pretty unbelievable. So here's the headline. Uh, comparing him, we'll put it up here, comparing him directly to George Wallace, the segregationist governor of Alabama, implying... There he is, ghost of George Wallace and Donald Trump, implying somehow that Trump is a racist. Don't attacks like this from the establishment make Trump stronger? They certainly do. Uh, he feeds off this kind of negative publicity. And look, anybody who watched that rally, and I watched it, uh, had to be impressed what Republican candidate, what candidate from any party this early could have could have generated a crowd in excess of 10,000. And, and by all accounts, there were 30,000 people, yeah, in a, in a stadium that fit 40, but 30,000 people to come out this far in advance is absolutely incredible. Now, I think a lot of that has to do with his celebrity. And sooner or later, that celebrity has to be turned in to a serious candidate. But I think Trump feeds off this negative publicity. It gives him earned media right. and only makes him meaner to go out there and, and attack them as well. Well, Scott, obviously, self-awareness is not in great abundance in politics. But you would think that the establishment candidates would look at Trump and say, did I do anything to create this? I mean, he may be a buffoon, but he's so popular. Why is that exactly? I don't see many of them asking those questions. Well, Donald Trump and his rise right now is a direct result of the Republican establishment trying to put another Bush in the White House. Uh, a lot of people say the definition of insanity is trying to do the same thing again and again and expecting a different result. And to millions and millions of Republican voters, the idea of another Bush as the party nominee is insane. And by the way, going a step further, the idea of a dynasty rematch between Bush and Clinton is especially insane. So yes, the New York Times, the establishment media has helped create this situation. And the more they dismiss him, the more powerful Donald Trump becomes. Did you just hear that, Brad? I mean, I'm not endorsing what Scott just said, <laughs> but I don't think I've ever heard a clearer distillation of it. What do you make of that? That's right, isn't it? Well, look, the, the country may in fact be well Clintoned out and Bushed out. Uh, but that remains to be seen. And we have a wide field of candidates where it's not, we're, on the Republican side, it's certainly not a coronation like the Democrats want with Clinton, and their coronation is not going so well. So Jeb is going to have to fight in a wide field of candidates. It's a much different situation between Republicans and Democrats. And Scott might be right. I think that, that the country may, in fact, uh, not be ready for another Bush or Clinton. And certainly this is true, that if it was a Bush-Clinton matchup, it's more like a reality television show than it is a presidential campaign. So, Scott, the political class in Washington is obsessed with one question. What's the kryptonite for Trump? How do you stop this guy? How do we kill Trump? How do we kill his political career? What's you know, the answer? Is it possible? The political class cannot kill Donald Trump. Voters are going to decide that. And when, it, when the elections actually begin, will people actually go into the voting booth or go to their caucus and stand up for Donald Trump? Or will they say, let's look at another option? I don't know what's going to happen. Nobody does right now. Uh, nobody has a, a clear shot at this nomination today. It could be, as some in the establishment predict, that eventually people will get tired of Donald Trump and maybe they will feel better about Jeb Bush. Or it may be that the establishment has to come to grips with somebody like Ted Cruz because they don't want Donald Trump in the White House. It's going to be interesting, but this is the reason we have caucuses and primaries. It's not for the elites to decide. It's for the voters to Yeah, play. no, that's, and this, this is all a reminder of that. Scott and Brad, thanks a lot. That was super interesting. I appreciate it.